primarily in the Bronx, South Bronx of New York. It was not a very nice area. It was uh, an area that had a very high rate of juvenile delinquency. It was very common to be a member of a gang. But we grew up there. That's, that's what fate was handed to us. I came from a, uh, a very poor family, um, a family that uh, my father had died when I was about 10 years old. Three brothers, all of whom had already moved away. Mom was third grade educated, morally strong lady. She had to work as a seamstress in a sweatshop. She gave as much attention as she could give to me, but unfortunately I became one of those latchkey kids. I mean, I came out of school, she wasn't home, she was working, so I had a key to open the door. Fortunately, most of my time, I, I would go down to a boys club where they gave me a little job to hang up coats at uh, 40 cents an hour. And uh, I became a member of that club and spent a lot of time there. So it was the club that kept me off the street. It was the club that, that kind of was like my surrogate father. There were two men there particularly. One was Archie Mangini, another guy was uh, Charlie McNiven who were like my father, gave me that guidance, okay? Because my, my mother and my brother could not do that. Well, in the print shop, you, you learn how to make manuals to run this equipment a lot of sophisticated drawings and things like that. One day, uh, one of the guys, an engineer, said, you know, we need someone who can help us do just simple testing of the equipment. So they asked me to join the engineering department. So I was learning, but I didn't make a, didn't make a lot of money. So I decided to go and look for a job. And I got this job at a company called uh, Picker, which was a, uh, an x-ray company, the largest x-ray company in the world at that time. And that was my first exposure to the cardiac area, to the medical area, and again, learning all the time. So my education wasn't a formal education of, of a university or a college, but rather uh, the experiences that I had in a variety of different positions uh, in, in electronics, and chemistry, in the heart, okay? To the point whereby later on I was able to apply all of those things and start creating and, and designing and inventing pacemakers and other medical products. I learned the limitations of the pacemakers. The pacemakers were big and bulky. When I say big, about the size of a hockey puck and used a mercury zinc battery. They would put these batteries into a pacemaker, but then they would, they would have to encapsulate the pacemaker with a material called epoxy. The epoxy would allow moisture from the body to come in. And that moisture would touch some of the components and cause problems and cause the batteries to decay, etc. Sometimes a pacemaker would be going just a few months and it would fail. And I knew there had to be a better way. My back was against the wall. And I went to church, middle of the day, knelt down and asking the good Lord to give me a helping hand. And at that point, right in front of me was a prayer card. The prayer card was to St. Jude, the patron saint of hopeless cases. Studied it, 
got to understand why his name was chosen. And part of the promise is that you will always promote his name. Did a novena, things started to happen. I started to raise capital. I started to put a team together. Everything was happening because I started that devotion. So we made our circuit, we used the latest technology, we were the first company to make our own hybrid technology in-house. And we started to make this and we sealed everything. And then finally, we sealed the battery, the circuit, and then the whole pacemaker we sealed. There was no moisture going to get into that. And the battery had a greater capacity. It didn't have any self-discharge, so it had more energy that could come out and we ended up making this uh, first lithium-powered pacemakers that last 20, 30 years. In fact, this one on this wall has been running for 40 years and uh, it's still, still working. I started that whole concept when I was still 30 years old, okay? Again, uh, doing something that had to be done, okay, against all adverse conditions. Still have that prayer card, and eventually things worked out well. The next company I started was called St. Jude Medical. Kipps Bay, of course, is named after the boys club that I grew up in. When you uh, have bypass surgery, they take veins out of your legs and they put them on your heart. The veins coming out of your leg can't handle the high pressure of the heart. So as a result, after a period of time, uh, they begin to wear out. So what we're doing at Kipps Bay is to make a device that we can put around the vein before it goes on the heart. This is made out of wire. We now have some patients that are approaching five years with this device. Always been a lot of fabulous things that have happened in my life. And I've often said many, many times that the, the hand of God is on me. I've been blessed in so many different ways. I have a wonderful wife, two beautiful girls. I always say I would not like to change any day in my life, but by the same token, I've also, also have said there are many days that I would not like to relive. The exposure that I had at the boys club, for example, not only did they help me, but over the years I've been able to go back and help them and work with young people who are in the same situation that I was, who are struggling to try to get out of their situation. There are times when I struggle with some of the things that I have, that I have in my life, but I, I struggle with them like everybody else. The challenges will never go away in your life, okay? But you have to work with what you got. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you can pursue things. And I know it's hard. You know, I know that some of these kids out there, unfortunately, don't have a mother like I used to have. They had a, maybe a mother that's, that's an alcoholic or even worse in drugs and all that sort of stuff. We, you know, we know that there are situations like that. But I can tell you one thing, there are thousands of boys and girls club out there. Find one. You may have to get on a subway to get there. You may have to take a bus, you may have to walk, but find them. Get off the street, get in the club, and there'll be someone there that will show you love and attention. Because once you got love and attention, then you can reach. You can say, gee, well, I want to do this and this and this. They'll show you how to do it.